Hi, everyone. Um, so we talked a little bit about magnetic forces on currents uh, moving through conductors. And currents moving through conductors are simply moving electric charges. So I want to talk a little bit about the force that individual moving charges will feel from magnetic fields. So you can think of a current in a wire as being a collection of electric charges that are all moving uh, in roughly the same direction in a DC current. Um, so let's uh, define N charges um, that are moving at uh, roughly similar speed V, um, which means that they travel a distance L in a time T. In that case, we can define our current as uh, current is equal to number of charges N that move this distance um, times the charge of one of them, usually be the charge of an electron in actuality, um, divided by the time that it takes to move that distance. And as we know, the force um, on a current or on a current carrying wire uh, is the current uh, times a length of wire within the magnetic field times the uh, magnetic field strength. Um, or force is I L cross B. Um, now we can plug in uh, our expression for current uh, into this equation. Uh, and then we can also plug in um, for L, or length, in terms of the uh, velocity of these charges. Um, and once you simplify it down, uh, time cancels out, um, and we get the uh, total force on these charges moving through this wire um, is equal to the number of charges times the charge of one of them uh, times their velocity crossed with the magnetic field. Um, and so the force on just a single charge is that total force divided by the number, number of charges. So we have the force on a single charge is the charge of that, well, charge, uh, times its velocity crossed with um, the magnetic field vector. Um, so the magnitude of this is uh, QVB times the sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the velocity of this charge uh, and the magnetic field. And this means that if a charge is moving um, perpendicular to the magnetic field, you'll feel a maximum force. If it's moving parallel, you'll feel no force at all, because theta is zero, and the sine of theta is zero. Uh, and also, uh, if your electric charge is not moving, if you have a stationary electric charge, uh, it will feel no force. In that case, V, the velocity, is zero. So the force on a stationary electric charge due to magnetic fields is zero. And the direction of this uh, force, uh, just like the direction of the force on a current carrying wire, can be found with the right hand rule. Um, so you have a very similar version of the right hand rule for individual charges. We can take our right hands, we can put our left hands in our pockets. Um, and in this version of the right hand rule, you take your index finger put it in the direction of the motion of the electric charge. Take the rest of your fingers, put them in the direction of the magnetic field, and then your thumb gives you the force on a positive charge specifically. Um, unfortunately, uh, just like the force on um, a negative electric charge in an electric field uh, was opposite the direction of a positive charge in an electric field, direction of force on a negative charge in a magnetic field is opposite the direction um, of the force on a positive charge in a magnetic field. So as an example, uh, we can consider this uh, negative charge that's moving to the right through a magnetic field that's pointing uh, out of, excuse me, that's pointing into the board. Um, remember the uh, X in the circle uh, looks like the fletching or the feathers on an arrow. That's a uh, vector pointing uh, into the board. So to find the uh, direction of the force on this negative charge, take our right hands and keep our left hands in our pocket. Um, index finger in the direction of the um, motion of the charge, its velocity, that's to the right. Uh, rest of our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, that is into the board, into the page. And then our thumb gives us an upward direction. But because we have a negative electric charge, 
the actual force is the opposite of that. It's the opposite of the direction of our thumb, unfortunately. So the actual force on this negative electric charge is downward. Um, something else to note about um, magnetic forces is that interestingly, because the uh, magnetic force on moving electric charges is always perpendicular um, to the direction of motion, um, magnetic fields will do no work because the force that they exert will always be perpendicular to the direction of motion. And so um, you don't have a force in the direction of motion times some distance. And so the work is always zero. So you have an electric charge um, moving perpendicular to just a uniform magnetic field. It'll actually move in a circle. And to see why, we can consider the forces on that electric charge. So just like in our previous example, if we have a negative charge moving to the right, like this, we can use the right-hand rule to find the direction of the force on it as it moves through a magnetic field it's pointing into the board. So index finger in the direction of the uh, movement of the charge in the direction of the velocity. The rest of your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Um, then your thumb is going to point up. Um, but because this is a negative electric charge, the force on it will be the opposite direction of your thumb a downward force. So because this charge is feeling a force that's perpendicular to its motion, it won't speed up, it won't slow down, it'll stay the same speed, but its direction will change. Um, it will bend downward. And so if we check in, in with it at some later time, um, it will still be moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, but it will have changed direction. So now, if we work out the forces on it, um, we find that uh, the force is no longer pointing down, but rather sort of down and to the left, um, which will make it bend once again. Um, it will continue to not change its speed, but instead change direction. And if we continue to follow it as it goes, um, it will curve around and form a circle. And we can work out the uh, radius of that circle um, by uh, applying Newton's second law. So circular motion is associated with a, a centripetal acceleration, an inward acceleration of v squared over r. Um, and if we uh, apply Newton's second law, which tells us that the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration, um, the only force acting on this charge is the magnetic force. Um, and so that can go on our left as the sum of forces. We have QVB sine of theta, uh, where theta is 90 degrees. This is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field. So theta is 90 degrees. Is equal to uh, the mass of this charge um, times its speed squared over the radius of our circle. And if we rearrange this a little bit, we can find the radius of our circle. We can find that the radius depends on the uh, mass, the speed, the charge, and the magnetic field. Um, so a faster particle will travel in larger circles, that kind of makes sense. Um, and smaller magnetic fields will also give larger circles. And if you want to find out um, how much time it takes this uh, charge to go around the circle, you can work that out quite easily um, by taking distance over velocity. And that may or may not show up on your homework. All charged particles feel forces due to electric fields. Uh, those forces are parallel to the electric field. In the case of positive charges, they're in the same direction as the electric field. In the case of negative charges, they're opposite the direction of the electric field. Uh, however, not all charged particles feel force due to magnetic fields. Only moving charged particles feel force due to magnetic fields. Um, and that direction of that force can be found using the right-hand rule. Um, and again, is the opposite for positive charges versus for negative charges. And we can combine um, both of these forces into a single equation called the Lorentz equation. Um, this tells us how much force the charged particle will feel um, if it's traveling through combination of electric and magnetic fields in the same region of space. Um, and if you have both electric and magnetic fields in the same space, a charged particle can experience force from both of them at once. Um, 
And as sort of an example of a case where we might have this, we can consider a velocity selector, like this one in the lower left. A velocity se selector uh, often has a constant or uniform uh, electric field um, perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field. So in this case, we have a set of parallel plates uh, creating a uniform electric field pointing downward. Um, and we have uh, something like uh, two poles of a horseshoe magnet creating uniform magnetic field that's pointing into the board. And if a uh, charged particle moves through both of these fields uh, to the right, in this example here, it'll feel a force from the magnetic field and a force from the electric field. Uh, in this case, the force due to the electric field on a positive charge would be downward in the same direction as the electric field. And the force due to the magnetic field would be upward. You can work out using the right hand rule. So if one of these forces is greater than the other, uh, this charged particle will be deflected. It will accelerate and change direction and veer off from a straight line path. Um, and in order to not be deflected, uh, that charged particle has to have a very specific velocity um, at a very specific speed. Uh, we can figure out what that very specific speed is um, by again using Newton's second law. So in order to not be deflected, uh, that particle should not be accelerating. And so the sum of the forces should be zero. Um, the forces acting on this uh, charged particle are a magnetic force and an electric force. The magnetic force is pointing upward. The magnetic force, excuse me, the electric force is pointing downward. And so we can say that uh, QVB minus QE, that is magnetic force minus electric force, is equal to zero. Um, and so the magnitudes of these two forces, uh, QVB and QE, should be equal. And if we solve for V, the speed, we can find the speed that a uh, charged particle would have to have in order to not be deflected by this combination of electric and magnetic fields, um, which is the electric field strength divided by the magnetic field strength. And so by tuning the electric and magnetic fields very specifically, um, you can select uh, only a very specific velocity for charged particles. Um, and this is used in things like uh, particle accelerators to only select very certain particles with specific speeds and specific energies. Um, it should be noted that this doesn't depend on the sign of the charge. If you reverse the sign, if you uh, put in a negative particle instead of a positive particle, um, the direction of both of these forces would be reversed. So you'd have the same situation where you still need to have a uh, speed that's equal to uh, the electric field strength over the magnetic field strength, um, even though you reverse the charge. <laughs>